In Chinese, we have a proverb called "looting a burning house." In Chinese, it's pronounced "cheng wo da jie." It means to take advantage of a crisis and to turn it into an opportunity for yourself. So, for example, I've been doing it a lot this past year. Not all of it is bad, by the way. Let me give you a, a, a few examples, and I'll let you think about、uh, some more. I have social anxiety problems, and、uh, two years ago, it would have been unimaginable for me to, to to go bowling, for example, being stuck in a crowded environment like that. But Last year, when it was only open 25-50 percent capacity, I got to practice doing it at 25-50 percent capacity, and use it as a stepping stone. And now I can sort of comfortably do it at 100 percent capacity, right? And、um, I took advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity, right? And it's a win-win, right? The, biz- the businesses get to keep opening. You know, we're taking precautions. And、um, so I think、uh, not not all tsung wo da jie is automatically bad, right? Now, sometimes when I go to the grocery store, they have limits on stuff you can buy. It seems sensible, right? But recently, I saw that they were limiting things that didn't really make any sense, right?、Uh, Pokemon cards. When I saw that, my first reaction was, "God, are people using this as a currency, right? Because the dollar hasn't been doing too good." And、um, I asked the, the、um, employees, "They're, God, what's happening?" And they explained to me that people were buying these Pokemon cards and reselling them onto Amazon. Now I'm thinking to myself, "How is that a bad thing? You got people who have、um, whatever medical condition, they can't come out to the grocery store to buy Pokemon cards, and so they can order it on Amazon." And、um, obviously, they would rather do that than come out here and risk.、Um, you know, maybe they have pre-existing conditions, and the people who are buying the Pokemon cards at the grocery store and selling them on Amazon, they, they obviously、uh, are making good money to justify doing that, right?、Uh, how is that a bad thing? And I'm thinking to myself. If you limit how many people can buy so that they can't do that anymore, the people on Amazon are just going to have to pay more because there's going to be less competition, right? Or they're going to have to risk coming out to the store and becoming a super spreader, right? If they have underlying health conditions, right? I don't know who's winning off of that uh, limiting. Uh, it's a feel-good measure, right?、Uh, I don't think there is anything as a bad example of Tsung Ho Da Jie, right? I'm looking forward to、um, the Tokyo Olympics. There are some Japanese coins that I like, and I'm thinking that if it shakes up the economy of Japan, whether for the good or the the bad,、uh, I want to watch、uh, the market on some of these coins. So Japan, just like the United States, had silver coins up until the 1960s, and they had a hundred yen coin that contained about a tenth of an ounce of silver, of pure silver. It's an alloy, but It will yield 0.0925 ounces of silver. Now, the reason I like that is because right now, at the、uh, current rate of silver, is about $25 an ounce. So you got $250 worth of silver in that, but the coins are still legal tender in Japan, right? So if you're wrong about silver,、uh, it will still be worth 100 yen, which is a little bit under a dollar right now. So it gives you a little bit of a buffer if you're wrong about silver. I actually think I actually think it's quite safe because if you're wrong about silver, I would expect the Japanese yen to go up a lot because of Japan imports a lot of raw materials like silver, but also other raw materials that move in the same direction as silver. Right. So if silver were to drop to ten dollars an ounce, five dollars an ounce, I would expect the yen to rise to fifty to one easily, easily. And so I expect that to be quite a safe haven from、uh, all sorts of both inflation and deflation, right? Well, Tokyo actually、um, hosted the Olympics back in 1964 as well, when they made a commemorative coin, a、uh, thousand yen containing 0.5948 ounces of silver, which is worth 0.59 ounces of silver is worth about. About fifteen dollars today. Now the problem with these coins is that they tend to go for quite a collectible value, right? Sometimes you, on eBay, you can find damaged or, or very low grade coins for uh, uh, close to silver value. I, I, I'm, I'm always looking for those,、um, and then you have very good, very solid. Uh, 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 downside risk uh, protection from that, right? If if silver were to drop, 
a thousand yen is still worth about eight or nine dollars, right? And like I said, if silver were to drop, the yen should go up considerably. Now moving up a little bit from that, you got the 10,000 yen coin. This was made in 1986 to commemorate uh, the 60th year of the empire. Contains 0 0.6424 ounces of silver. Now the problem is that uh, because the coin is still legal tender, it's going to sell for closer to 10,000 yen, which is uh, about 80 or 90 dollars right now. Right now, uh, if so, this is more of an investment in the yen with some downside protection. If you're wrong about the yen, right? This is kind of the other way around, right? Um, if silver were to go up even more, um, this this would make it. This would probably be a better hedge against the, the problems that I talked about earlier, right? When silver is $50, $100 an ounce, I'll probably be switching over to these uh, to kind of lock in that silver price while at the same time continuing to take the upside ride to it, right? Uh, this coin was made in 1986, by the way, which probably explains why the high face value, right? People were just reeling from the Hunt Brothers, and there was a lot of uncertainty. I think in Japan, uh, they're... Uh, they, they they don't sell coins for a pre, uh, commemorative coins for a premium. They sell them for face value, which is why commemorative gold and silver coins have such a high face value. Now that same year, 1986, we also made a commemorative of gold coin, 100,000 yen, 0.643 ounces of gold. Um, so let's see, 0.643. Right now, gold is about seventeen hundred dollars an ounce. Uh, so it's got about twelve hundred dollars worth of gold, and the face value is about eight or nine hundred dollars. So um, there was a time when it was the other way around, though. I, I seem to remember paying the hundred thousand yen uh, amount for for that coin. So you you can see that already the the, the downside protection has already been activated uh, in the past on this uh, nineteen eighty six gold coin, right? Unfortunately, right now the Japanese economy is doing not bad, and this is going for quite a premium over either one of those because now J Japan finally recognizes that it has some downside protection, right? So I'm hoping that that whatever happens with the Olympics, right, either they get canceled, they have to do all these precautions, or the worst case, right, they become a super spreading event. Right, it's probably going to shake up the market on all those coins. Now, to give you an idea of how big an opportunity any of those coins are, back in the early 2000s, I drove my parents insane because of a suggestion that I had made to my dad. My dad had just lost a good fraction of our family's wealth. You know, my parents had inherited some wealth from their family, and um, my dad had been... Uh, a, a chemical engineer for 10 years at this point. But my dad had squandered a good percentage of all that in the dot-com bubble. And it caused a lot of family strife. And I think my parents almost got divorced over that. They survived. But um, I was suggesting to my dad that he should take whatever... I had just started collecting coins at the time. And um, at the time, we had a 40% silver half-dollar that was of going for, I think, 60 to 65 cents a coin. Probably even less if you bought them in bulk. But I liked it because of the downside risk protection, right? If you're wrong about silver, you still have 50 cents out of every 60 that you invested. And so I told my dad, you know, why don't you take whatever you have left and buy 40% silver half dollars with it? And my dad just thought I was crazy. He thought that I was spending too much time reading about collecting coins. You know, my grades were suffering because I was constantly searching coins that I was getting at the bank, you know, and, and uh, he just thought it was crazy. Now, the reason I liked it is because of the downside protection, and you got to understand at the time it had only been 20 years since the Hunt Brothers, and it seemed like if it happened once, it could happen again, right? And so I'd done, I'd done a lot of reading at this point. And my dad thought I was crazy. I wish YouTube were more popular at the time. If I had recorded it somehow, uh, or even existed at the time, I didn't. YouTube didn't even exist. If I had recorded it or written it down somewhere, you know, because um, now, now my dad really regrets not listening to the advice. But he doesn't remember me saying it. Uh, I could have sworn I did though, but. 
I think the Japanese coins are gonna be just like that 20 years from now, right? And this time I actually have it on the record. Thanks for watching.